Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this Atom Stack P9 laser engraver, which is the smallest 10 watt laser engraver that I've ever reviewed. Its working area is 220 by 250 millimeters. It uses two 5 watt laser modules and combines them into one single laser dot. It should be able to do fine detail engraving, thick cuttings, as well as stainless steel engravings. It comes with a touchscreen offline controller, which means you don't even need to connect a USB cable to the computer, so you just have to export the G-code file like you would do for a 3D printer. I would like to thank Atomstack for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. The structure of this machine is really simple. You just need to put the x-axis on the y-axis and connect the belt and some cables. The assembly should take no more than 10 minutes. I will turn on the machine and use the touchscreen to jog it and make sure everything is working. Press the home key to return to the home position, which is the position when you turn on the machine. It came with a steel plate to protect your table, but I will use a honeycomb bed as it works much better than just putting a piece of plywood or a steel plate underneath when you do cutting. To set the focus, put the acrylic plate that came with the machine between the laser module and your working material and use the thumb screw to adjust the height. Okay, let's pick one of the sample files for our first test. Draw a preview frame to make sure it's inside the plywood and then press start. We only need to do one pass, so press yes to start. I didn't align the plywood perfectly, but the result seems okay. Next, I will try the second sample file to cut out a dog from this 2mm plywood. As this is a 10 watt module, it cuts really fast. This job took 1 minute and 20 seconds, and the edges are clean. Next, I will go to my computer and export a G-code file from Lightburn. I will try to engrave at 10,000 mm per minute and use different power from 10% to 100%. It looks like 10,000 mm per minute may be too fast. The area engraved with 50% power or less is not clear, so I think the optimal speed of this machine should be around 6,000 to 8,000 millimeters per minute. Then, I will engrave a large photo. The size is 235 by 135, which is at least considered large for the size of this machine. I will use 8,000 millimeters per minute with 100% power and 250 millimeters per minute with 100% power to cut it out. It took 47 minutes to complete, but it doesn't look as good as the sample photos from the official website. When I looked into the parameters, I found that they just used 1000 millimeters per minute and 16% power to engrave this picture, which took more than 11 hours. So I will try to slow it down and see if I can get such high detail results. It looks much better. I will keep the same settings and engrave this photo again on a higher quality oak wood. The details in the photo are awesome. Compared to the lighthouse, it is definitely worth spending more time if you want the photo to look nice. Next, I will try some cutting, starting with 3mm plywood. I will use 500mm per minute down to 100mm per minute and see how fast we can cut through this 3mm plywood completely in a single pass. It seems we can cut through completely with 350mm per minute or slower. As this is a 10 watt laser, we expect it to be able to cut through much thicker wood. I will try this quarter inch poplar solid wood, which is 6.35mm thick. Using 150 millimeters per minute or slower can cut through completely. 
After that, I will try to cut this half inch poplar solid wood, which is 12.7 millimeters thick. I will start by using 75 millimeters per minute. It didn't cut through, but it goes deep down to around 11 millimeters. So we should be able to cut through in two passes. Let's see if this is the case. I will cut another line two millimeters away from the last one with two passes. Apart from the corner having a tiny bit of leftover wood that is still connected, the entire piece of wood can be cut through completely in two passes at 75 millimeters per minute. Then I will try to cut some acrylic. We have some three millimeter sample acrylic that came with this machine. The size of the acrylic is just 25 by 50 millimeters. I will try a few words and see if it can cut out all letters. It should look even better if I just cut a few larger letters, but the result still looks good. Finally, I will engrave a 65 by 65 millimeter logo on a stainless steel sheet. The one on the right was engraved by a 5 watt laser with the same 3000 millimeters per minute speed and 100% power. With this 10 watt laser module, the color is darker than the one with the 5 watt laser. Okay, let's talk about what I think about this machine. This machine is super easy to put together. It comes with a few legs to help you align when you tighten the screw of the Y axis, but I didn't need to use them as I just used the laser module to make sure it remains the same height when I move the tool head from right to left. The touchscreen offline controller is handy as I don't need to connect the machine to my computer using a USB cable to complete all tests. The touchscreen is connected to the electronic enclosure using an HDMI cable, which is even handier when you're using something like this laser tent, so you can control the machine from the outside. The 10 watt laser module is powerful. It can cut through half an inch of solid wood in two passes, and it can also actually cut down deep to 11 millimeters in just one single pass. They claim that the laser dot is 0.06 millimeters, which is smaller than most other laser modules. I don't have any equipment to verify that, but when I use a slower speed to engrave photos, it can deliver awesome results. It also came with an emergency switch, a power button, and a reset button, so if anything goes wrong, you can use any of them to stop the machine. It also came with an extra safety feature, where the machine will be stopped automatically if the angle is tilted more than 20 degrees. The focus can be adjusted with one thumb screw, which is very convenient. This machine is also very portable compared to a standard 400 by 400 engraver. Now for the cons. Of course, a smaller working machine will have a smaller working area. It won't be a problem if you want to engrave a few different things on a large piece of wood, as you can easily move it around. If you need to engrave one large piece, you can still use the Align feature in Lightburn to divide a large workpiece into a few smaller pieces, but it may call for some extra work. It came with four legs for you to align the machine when putting it together, which is nice, but the manufacturer also claimed these legs can be used to raise the machine in case you need to use a roller or work with taller materials. However, I actually would not recommend that, as the machine can only securely sit on three legs. As the corner with the electronic enclosure can't fit too nicely with the leg, it doesn't look secure enough to me. Finally, this machine is using the MakerBase ESP32 engraver motherboard, and it should also support Wi-Fi. I have tested out other machines with the same board and the Wi-Fi feature, and it's not perfect, but it works okay most of the time, except for engraving photos with a large file size, in which case, it may take three to four minutes to upload a 25 megabyte file, and another two to three minutes to draw the preview frame. If your file size is a few megabytes or smaller though, it's totally fine. The manufacturer could consider releasing firmware that is able to use the ESP32 Wi-Fi feature in the future. If you are working with small size projects most of the time and require a powerful laser module for cuttings as well as high detail photo engraving, you can definitely look into the Atom Stack P9. I put the link to the machine as well as my laser tent, honeycomb bed, LED lights, and other 3D printed parts for the fan duct under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.